since posting this video here on my introduction to 3D printing, which was tailored a little bit towards us telescope users, but is really for anyone, I've had a much bigger response than I expected. I promise not to change this channel's focus into a 3D printing channel though. I've got some Nina and other content coming, but when I get questions, especially in this volume, I wanna provide answers and demonstrations. That's why I'm here and why I do what I do. It seems many of you are either already using 3D printers along with your astrophotography hobby or have been kicking the tires on the idea. I got so many emails about the topic. Lots of people sharing images of what they themselves had designed and printed. Lots of talk about how much money they saved here and there, although that can be debatable at times. And lots of questions about where to get 3D files to print and wanting to know how hard it is to design custom parts for printing. Basically, the overwhelming question was, can I really do this? And the answer is yes, you can. I'm Chad or Patriot Astro. Let's dive in. The two things I'm gonna to do today are, one, give you an idea on how to find 3D models that may already be available, and two, take you through a couple sprinting demos of how to identify a need, then design, and finally print a functional solution. Okay, the first one, how and where to find 3D models to print. As a blanket statement, the internet. But more specifically, you can perform a generic search online for something like 3D printable ZWO cable management or ZWO Cable Management STL, or WiseCam 3 Mount STL. You get the picture. Your searching results will take you to one of a few places. So instead, you could just start there. Places like Thingiverse or Printables, Yegi, Thangs, or STL Finder. Many models you'll find will be free, and some even have printing instructions attached, like how much infill to use, and whether or not the model requires supports and how to assemble a model if it happens to be printed in pieces. There are also some models that may require a small fee to access the files. And for those of you who don't feel like printing at all, some designers even sell their prints via stores like Etsy. While there are lots of models out there to customize your mount or camera or mini PC, etc., sometimes what you need is a bit more specific than what you can find available online. So you may need to design something yourself. And as with any hobby, there is a learning curve, but taking something from concept to a physically functional print is pretty rewarding. This is another way that 3D printing is a lot like astrophotography, actually. Custom designing and printing a part is a lot like getting a really good image. In the end, you're excited, you're glowing, and you show your family only for them to say, huh. So the big question I got over and over since that last video was, can I do this? Can I design this stuff? I think it's best for me just to show you a couple examples from concept to print. I'm gonna show you two sets of workflows today. One for custom design cable management and one for mounting a wise camera onto your telescope. Okay, this first one is about cable management. Before I start, there are lots of ways to go about this and lots of ways to design these pieces. Also, there are lots of tools out there, but I'm using Shaper 3D. I decided I wanted some cable management maybe something to hold and organize some power, USB and do strap cables. I want something I can use multiple ways as well. Maybe mounted with a zip tie or Velcro strap around my camera or free floating as needed. I know most of my cables are about five millimeters diameter or less and I have more cables than I wish I did. Okay, so I have a concept and now I need to design something. I'm gonna sprint through these designs. I usually start with taking measurements using calipers, measuring angles, and using other tools like radius gauges for rounded corners. Then I try to sketch something out. This helps me find the easy pitfalls of the design so I know it going into the process. Then when ready, I jump into the 3D design tool. Before we do this first one, I want you to know how this works in this tool. You start by sketching or drawing a profile. Then you extrude that up and into a 3D object. From there, I can continue to manipulate the object by changing various physical properties or even sketching some more on various planes or surfaces, and then using that to manipulate my object further. There are constraints that can be applied to sketches. So I can tell the tool that I want a line to always be horizontal or vertical that two lines should always be at a specific angle to one another, that items should always remain tangent to each other, that pieces should stay attached. See, these constraints make sure that later manipulation of my 3D object in the tool doesn't break these rules. 
The system can auto apply some of these constraints and you can choose to enforce others. Now remember, this video will be sped up to save us some time. I'm not teaching you the tool today. I'm just demonstrating the design process. As you watch, think about 2D sketches turning into 3D shapes and how constraints help us stay true to the design. Also notice the flexibility of the tool to make changes and spin off even more design options quickly. Oh, and this tool works on multiple platforms, so I'll be demonstrating using my iPad. So occasionally you'll see the Apple Pencil and some finger touches pop up on the screen here and there. Okay, I'm quickly sketching here and I'm trying to get a two-dimensional sketch of the final shape I want to be one of the prongs of my cable management solution. I'm using circles of different sizes, some five millimeter to match my maximum cable size that I expect. Now I'm using a number of constraints and lines to keep everything in alignment. But ultimately I'll get a sketch of a two-dimensional object that should have the right profile. Now I'll go ahead and make a copy of this because I'll probably want to use this later. Now I'll go back to the original and it's as easy as extruding this upward. So I grab the profile and stretch it upward and just like that I have a three-dimensional object. Now from here, since this appears to be correct, what I'll do is clone this out multiple times. And then after I have multiple copies, I can connect them using the alignment tool. I'll connect them all together. And then to make them a single solid, I'll actually perform a union here. And then I have one single object once completed. I'll clone this off because I'll probably want to use this later as well. Coming back to the original, I can modify this as a 3D object now. So I'll go ahead and extrude out this bottom to give me a little bit more room to work with. So there's two things I wanna do at this point, and they both are in relation in this particular case to my C8 SCT. I know that the profile radius of my C8 SCT is 114 millimeters. I'm going to add an arc to the bottom of this object that's 114 millimeter radius of a curve so that it mounts flush to my telescope on the outside edge. I also want to be able to put some sort of strap through it. And in this sample design, I'll assume it's gonna be some sort of a zip tie. Um, you can design this any way you want, but I'll end up putting a hole that matches the curve that'll also work for the zip tie. Now to do this, I want these curves to be spaced in a certain way. So I'll draw some guidelines here at two millimeters and two and a half millimeters. And then I'll add my curves. And notice each curve again is 114 millimeters. Now this isn't necessarily in the correct place. So what I'm gonna do is actually pick this up and move the sketch over into the location I'd like it. Now I'm gonna show you something else. Previously we extruded to create a 3D object. I can also use the extrude function to subtract from a 3D object. So if I click here on this particular portion of the sketch, I can drag downward through the object and put a hole through it. After doing that, we've effectively cut this into two physical 3D objects and I don't need the bottom piece, so I'll just delete it. Okay, now I'm gonna show you another way to use this sketch. I'm gonna select this piece here and I'm gonna move it down into the object itself. Then I'm gonna hide the primary object and create another object using this curved profile. I'll extend the edges outward and you might be wondering why am I creating an object inside an object? Because I can use a subtract function and I can use this particular 3D object to cut away from my original object. Now I have the hole that I need for my zip tie. Okay, I'm a little worried though at this point that the object may tip over. I'd like to give it a little more weight at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is just draw a line again on this face. The line can even be longer than the object, it doesn't matter. Once I select the face, that new line will create a new two-dimensional area and I can use that to once again extrude upwards. So I'll take this from 10 millimeters to 20. Now that's great, but it's a little ugly. We could change this curve here very easily. I'll just grab that and bring that upward into a radius. Get that the way I want it to look. 
And then one more thing I'd like to do in this design is move this zip tie strap. I probably want to move it a little bit closer to the center so that it's balanced a little bit better. To do that, I can just grab it and move the bottom upward and then grab the top and bring it where it needs to be. Make sure my dimensions are accurate uh, by measuring using the measuring tool and getting it to come back to about six millimeters, which is what I expect for the small zip ties. Again, you could make this hole any size you want for Velcro or any size zip tie or other tie down mechanism. And then I can just name this object so I have it whenever I need it. But I can go a little bit further just very, very easily by reusing these 3D components. So let's go ahead and clone this original piece again one more time, and let's make cable management for my ZWO camera specifically to match the radius of my ASI 1600. So what I'll do is I'll draw some guidelines to keep everything centered. I'll draw some circles to match the 78 millimeter profile of my camera. I'll draw another circle and make sure they're concentric to each other. And then I'll use that for extruding up eight millimeters. To match it, I'll bring down the other part eight millimeters. I'll overlap the two solids, and then I'll just union them together so I have a single component. I can even clean it up a little bit and smooth out these corners so that it's just a little bit more elegant. And that's it, cable management for my ZWO. And just in case I forget the appropriate size, I can even throw a label on this very easily by projecting an image of some text and then using the extrude option to cut away a millimeter. What about some free floating clamp? Sometimes you just want to keep a bundle of wires together without tying them down. Let's do this real fast. I'll use the same shape. I'll connect a couple together and then I'll connect them together this way. And now I have a free floating clamp. What if I want it to be a little bit smaller? Well, I could just go back and redesign it. I could trim off the edges. I'll try to do it a little bit cleaner using some circles and some other shapes. But basically I'll just chop away at what I already have and I've got a smaller clamp. Let's just lay all these out. This did not take very long at all. So now I'll export it as an STL and open it in my slicer so that I can print it on my specific printer. If you're not sure what a slicer is, go back to my original video on introduction to 3D printing. Now I'll send this to my printer and print all of this. And it all prints very quickly. And again, you might not need all of this. Just print what you need when you need it. And here they are, easy to use and quick to print more if I ever need them. And I can customize for any radius or camera type I'd like to fit. I don't know if you can see this, but rain, rain, rain for me lately. But that's why i3D design gives me something to do when it's raining. This is what we got, right? Lots of cable management parts, little pieces, free floating. That's interesting, powerful stuff. Now I can come back to this safe project anytime and reprint as much as I want to modify it for all sorts of different mounting points, mounting methods, and even cable sizes and types. Okay, time for the second design demo before the rain really rolls in. And this will be another sprint through design. This time I'll show you an iterative approach. I'll first design a mountable holder for my Wise 3 camera. Out of the gate, I just want to get the mounting design right. Once that's good and I can physically validate it with my camera, then I'll iterate or modify my design to work to be mounted on my Celestron 8-inch SCT. My goal is to mount a forward-looking Wise camera on my scope so I can see in real time what my scope should be seeing, but in a much wider view. I can also use it to create time lapses of this view of my session so I can quickly review an evening before image processing so I can know if I should expect some bad images between 3 and 4 a.m. when those clouds came through or to go back and try to sort out if that was a plane or asteroid or satellite in my images. As always, I start by taking measurements and go from there. All right, let's start with another 2D sketch. Simple block, and what I'm gonna do is try to design something that the base of the WISE camera can slide into. So I don't wanna reinvent the wheel, I wanna use the base that the WISE camera came with. So after taking measurements, I'll find a way to get that to work. I'll also make sure that I design this using just good design principles. So I'll start with the square box first, cutting away the pieces that I don't need. I'll make sure that the cable can fit through the other side and I'll go ahead and check my measurements. I'm gonna to start to work on some angles, so I'll expose the internal view, 
and I can work on these angles to clean this up. Again, less plastic is good because it means less consumption of materials, but less printing time, more importantly. Now I'm gonna make sure the bottom is flat so it prints cleanly on the print surface, but I do wanna round parts where I can round them. And these two legs that are sticking out here will ultimately hold the camera in an upright and level position from the base. I'll continue to round some corners. And at this point, I just wanna make sure that this is going to work with my camera, that all of my measurements were right, and that it holds the camera the way I expected. So I'll go ahead and send this to my slicer. We can see in the slicer, it looks pretty good. I designed it where you don't see any red areas, so I've got nothing that's going to require support, so it'll print pretty quickly. And then I'll go ahead and print it. And once it's printed, I'll test it. And the test worked fine. I actually can get my WISE camera in here no problem, and it does support it and keep the head level. Now, with the iterative design approach, I started with a basic design. Now I'd like to be able to fit this securely onto the exterior of my C8 SCT. So just like in the first video, I'm basically gonna extend out the bottom. I'm gonna put a curve on it that matches my 114 millimeter radius of my C8 exterior, but I'm gonna put a larger slot in it this time to fit a much wider piece of Velcro that I'll be using to hold this down. You can see that I'm using a lot of the same principles, and as you begin to design more and more, you start to learn how to reuse these techniques very quickly. Very, very similar to the original video. And you can see, once we're done, we'll slice it. Everything looks good, no problems here. And then we'll print it. And this component printed pretty quick, so now I'll be able to mount my WISE camera, pointing forward, looking at the night sky view of my telescope. So we designed quite a few things today and pretty quickly, and I know it was fast, but hopefully you can see what you'd be getting yourself into and understand the design process a little bit more. There is a learning curve, but these designs did not take long at all, and I have exactly what I need now and can modify easily in the future. Keep your questions coming. I love doing videos on what people actually need, although sometimes I'm aware that you don't even know what you needed to know before I told you, and that's okay too. If you do need more info on 3D printing or the WISE cameras, go back and watch my recent videos on those topics. I have more links within those videos as well as in this video to keep your research moving along. I hope to see you soon in clear skies, not rain. Please get clear skies.